All right, let's uh, skip the pleasantries and let's get right into this video. What we're going to do today is we're going to work on spawning enemies. So here are what you're going to need. You're going to need the project that we've already been working on so far. Uh, you're also going to need two enemy sprites, at least two enemy sprites. Uh, what we're just going to do today is we're going to work on a system that it's that's not unique to Game Maker, but uh, interface and programming wise, it is unique to Game Maker. But uh, the concept behind it is pretty generic. It's kind of used in almost every game that randomly spawns enemies into into the system. So what you're going to need is you're going to need yeah, two enemy sprites and of course two enemy objects at least. Of course you can change this up to whatever suits your project. You have three, four enemies, whatever. Uh, but I'm just going to work with these two. Uh, I don't have sprites for them yet. I'm still kind of working out what kind of enemies we'll have in our project uh, towards the end. But uh, if you guys want to put a suggestion down, then by all means do so. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is actually we're going to go into the game object. And what we're going to write here in the create event. And this uh, runs right at this, not at the start of the game, but when this object is created for the first time. What we're going to do is we're just going to put in the code randomize. Randomize. Now, what this does is it randomizes the game seed so that you don't get the same results every single time. Uh, that's because what we want to do is every time you enter into a room, we want the room to do something different every single time. So spawn different types of enemies, spawn different number of enemies, and by using this, we can not guarantee it, but we can definitely increase the chances that we'll have a different uh, enemy setup every single time. So that's all we need to do for the game create. Now I've already created the object, but uh, go ahead and create yourself an empty game object here, which is the object spawn point. It's really not going to do anything. In fact, uh, we're not going to write any code for it. Originally, I was thinking that we should create um, a, an object. Uh, sorry, we should create the enemy spawn code inside of the spawn point, but then I very quickly realized the limitations of that approach. Uh, I won't go into details. I just want to keep this video short because I'm kind of strapped for time today. So that's all you need. We just need a spawn point here. And then what we're going to do is go into the room where you want enemies to spawn in. And in the instances layer, and I've already done this as well, is I just want you to place uh, however many spawn points you want. So for me, I'll put it in a, I'll put in an extra one. Oops. I grabbed the room, not the object. So here we go. I have five spawn points here. One, two, three, four, five. And basically, we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, we won't play the game yet because we've actually done nothing. In the properties section, in the room properties section, we're going to scroll down and we're going to look at the creation code. Now, let's have a look at these. These are the notes that I wrote up before I started this video. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to, let's have a look at this first line. We're going to loop through the level and get the number of spawn points we have. And then here in the second line, with each instance, we're going to get the instance ID. It's very important that we do. And then we're going to store the X position and the Y position of each of the spawn points. Uh, and we're going to use those values later. Then we're going to roll a dice each single, every single time so that we have a different enemy spawn in. And then with that, we're going to do something according to the value that we get. All right, so let's actually get to writing the code. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a for loop. So for, and I'm just going to use the generic i equals zero. And then we're going to use this i is less than instance number. Now what this function does, what instance number does is it gets the number of instances in the room or whatever you're counting of a specific object. So in this case, I'm going to say object spawn point. So I'm going to get the number of object spawn points that we have in the room. And then we're going to go to the next one after. So basically what it does is it's 
when, it, when we run this code is it starts from zero, obviously, and then it counts how many objects form points we have, and it will return that value. Now we're going to make sure that we close it off first. I've been getting a lot of been getting a lot of comments about people getting a malformed if statements, and usually that happens when you don't uh, encap not encapsulate, but when you don't close off your code blocks properly, or if you have a like a, an extra bracket somewhere. So I guess for you guys, uh, find your own rhythm. But uh, what I like to do is if I write an if statement, or in this case, a for loop, I'll open and close the bracket before I write any code inside. So that's just a personal tip here. So here with this line, with each instance, what we're going to do is we are going to, like it says here, get the instance ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, we're going to create a local variable. And I'll just put in the generic term inst, short for instance, of course. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say instance, we're going to use another instance function, instance, I think it's a find. Yes, instance find. And of course, we're going to use object spawn point, obj spawn point, because that's uh, the information that we need. And we're going to use the i value from the for loop. Remember to close off the line when you're done. So what this instance find line does is it takes, uh, it takes the object that we're going to look for. And obviously, uh, what number it is, according to this for loop, obviously, it's going to be zero all the way through to however many we have here. <clears throat> now, what it does is it returns the unique instance ID. So it's going to be different every single time, which is useful for us because the next thing that we need to do is actually we need to store a the x position. So we're going to say x uh, is inst dot x. And basically what this does is it will change every single time we run the for loop and it's going to find the instance number of that or the instance ID and then store it here. And then again, we're going to say var x, uh, sorry, var y. We're going to do the same thing, but this time with the y variable. And we're going to say inst dot y. By the way, guys, I would like to uh, give a special shout out to Peter is crazy, who proves that even beginners can read, of course. And of course, if you do read and you do read it carefully, uh, even error messages will be trivial for you guys. So special shout out and congratulations for solving your problem. Peter is crazy. Uh, by the way, uh, if you guys haven't got any of the resources, or if you want to skip any of the the what's it any of the art bits that we have in this series then by all means go grab the visual assets which are in the i think it's a google drive folder that i have the link is in the description so go grab those resources i do update it uh as often as i can and of course uh well if i don't update it for a while just uh, just be patient uh as you know uh, my circumstances at the moment are not exactly ideal for making these types of videos. In fact, right now I'm not actually in my uh, in my space in my area. I'm actually renting out, or not renting. A friend has been charitable enough and given me some time to be able to use his space, and so I can make these at least uh, two or three videos in the time that I have. But uh, let's keep going anyway. Again, congratulations to Peter is crazy. You so you managed to solve a problem. Uh, that actually, if I'm being honest, a lot of beginners tend to get caught up on. So kudos to you. Kudos to you. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to store yet another variable. So let's, let's all make these pretty. What we're going to do this time is we're going to roll a dice. And basically, we're going to use value here. And what we're going to use is I random. Now, Whatever number you put in here is completely up to you, but I'm just going to use five. Why do I want to use five? Uh, if I'm being honest, uh, I was thinking of a six sided die for this, but if you remember, computer numbers start at zero. So I have to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, which gives us six values. And with iRandom, it starts at zero and goes all the way up to and including five. All right. So that's all we need for that one. So let's have a look at what this code does before we get into the main part. 
what it will do is it will start from zero and with each instance, so what, what it's going to do is it's going to find however many spawn points you have in your room. It could be zero, it could be one, it could be two, um, could be more. And then for each one, for each one, it will find the instance ID and then it will store its X and Y value. And then every, for every single instance, we're going to roll a six-sided die and the number will be zero all the way through to five. And so that comes up with six numbers. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do something according to the value that we get. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to use a switch statement. So we're going to have switch value. And that's, that's what I do. I always open and close uh, brackets, especially when it comes to these curly braces. I always make sure to open and close it first. So that's just a habit that I have. All right, let's get started with, let's put the, uh, let's put the, what's it? Let's put the skeleton in first. So let's start with the case one, oops, wrong one. Case one, case two, case three, case four, case five. And then of course we're going to break. Now, this next bit is completely up to you, but basically if we put a, a break here uh, or here or here or here or here, these are these each of these cases represents the chances that whatever you put for the case will happen. So in my situation, I think I'll have a one in five chance that the code will do nothing, that the spawn point will spawn no object. So I will use the keyword exit, like I have here. And basically, like I said, it does nothing. Do nothing. All right, now for the next thing, to be, to be careful when you're working with switch statements is make sure that if you want to, say for case zero, we want it to do nothing, make sure that we, make sure that you put in the keyword break uh, so that it will break out of the check if we don't have the break, it will keep going through each instance and run all of the code. So with switch statements, make sure you don't forget to add in the break line. And then I think for us, we will put in maybe a three in five chance that we'll spawn a regular enemy. And so for the case of one, two, and three, we will instance create and Oops, not instance create, that's GM uh, 1.4, instance create depth. Now instance create depth requires four, four arguments as it says down here at the bottom. All right, so we need an X position and a Y position and we already have those. So let's put those in, Go, we've got X and underscore Y. Don't use, don't use the inbuilt X and Y, just uh, use, make sure you use the variables that we have stored up here. And then we need a depth. I'm just going to leave mine at zero. And then we have the object as well, whoops. And the object that we wanna spawn, I guess would be regular enemies. So OBJ enemy. And then again, don't forget the break statement so that it doesn't fall through and run any of these extra codes. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to say instance create. Again, we're going to create depth and again at X and at Y, zero. And we want to spawn the different one, the other enemy. So we're going to spawn enemy big, OBJ, enemy big. Again, uh, if you guys want the free visual resources that comes with this tutorial series, just click on the link. Uh, that'll take you to my Google Drive and you can get the resources there for free. Of course, they're not going to be that great looking. Uh, they are just uh, strictly for what we are making in this series. But uh, of course, if you just want to learn, then by all means, go for it. Go grab them. All right, let's 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 test this out. Let's play it. We're pretty much done at this stage uh, of the video. So really from here, you can fill around with the odds that you want. You can put, uh, instead of just five, maybe you can put 10, 100 if you want, but uh, be careful that 
the larger that you make your values, uh, the more you'll have to work with. So as you can see here, we have the we have our our two enemies here. Let's leave the room and come back. This time we have five enemies. And then this time we have no enemies. So that's interesting, isn't it? So there you go. We have a we can attack them. Of course, I still have to fix the offsets for the melee and for the shooting. So we'll probably get into that in the next video. But uh, uh, the next, either the next video or the video after, we'll do a project cleanup again, uh, so that everything lines up properly. Anyway, guys, let's uh, let's review what we've done here. We haven't really done much. In fact, we only did one thing or a couple of things. So here in the uh, in the game controller in the create event we randomize the seed. Uh, in fact, the better option actually would be to go into the add event section, go into the others here and add game start. That would probably be the better option to use, but uh, I'm really not sure as to the order of which it gets run. So I'll have to have a look into that. And if it is, if game start, just by the name of it, it sounds like a, it would be the first thing that gets run, but uh, I'll have to check into that. Uh, but yeah, we're going to randomize the seed. And that's all we're going to do in terms of object coding. In each room, in the creation code for each room, we are going to check how many spawn point objects we have. And for each one, we're going to store the X position and the Y position for each instance. And then for each instance, at the same time, we're going to roll a six-sided die. In this case, you can change this number to whatever you want. You can change it to 10, 20. Maybe you can change it if you really wanted to. You can just change it to 2 or 3. Uh, and for each uh, spawn point, for each value that we get, we're going to do something different. Again, with this section here, you can change it to whatever you want, depending on what odds you want. In fact, uh, if we get rid of that entirely, not, not exit, not break, we, if we play the game as is, in, in this case it won't exit, it won't break, so even though it gets zero, one, two, three, we're always going to have at least uh, enemies in the room. If we play it like that, we'll always have enemies. So there you go, five enemies. And it's going to be more or less different every time. Of course, the more values that you have, the higher your values, the more variety you can have in terms of what enemies spawn. Um, but of course, uh, I wouldn't say that it would cost more memory-wise since it runs uh, only once. But uh, of course, this is completely up to you. However, however you want to structure this part of the switch statement, this part of the code, uh, that's completely up to you. It's uh, that's what's good about uh, using switch statements, or at least doing things in with this method is much more fun, much more interesting. So that's all for this video. In the next session, I think we'll start working on actually dealing damage instead of just outright destroying them. So we're going to start putting in HP and enemies can kill the player and the player will slowly do damage to the enemies before killing them. Anyway guys, that's all for me and I'll hope to see you in the next session.